Joining me today is Roland Hancrook. He is a business life coach for small business owners with 20 years of experience as the founder and CEO of two successful businesses. He started new perspective coaching to help business owners in many aspects. Due to his experience, he is able to offer his clients business coaching, life coaching, and small business mentoring. Roland is also the author of the 10 truths trilogy business books for people who don't read business books but should. Thanks for joining me today, Roland. Pleasure to be here. So I always start uh, this podcast off with um, what do people know you by and how did you come about doing what you do? Yeah, well, it's a, I suppose it's a long and windy road. I'm not 12 anymore, as you might uh, um, you, as you might, you might be able to see from the picture. Um, I've been around for a while. Um, I, um, I started what I do now around about well, 15 years ago um, uh, after I sold my previous um, uh, building construction business, which I'd um, founded and run and grew um, for about 20 years here in, uh, well, in, in Australia, in Sydney, Australia. Um, I'm originally from Holland, um, from the Netherlands, and came here in 1984. But anyway, so I, I founded and grew this uh, construction company, and I sold it to my um, to one of my junior partners in um, in the business at that point in uh, around 2000 and 2003, 2004, and um, and then via a number of little circuitous routes and. Um, uh, coincidences, uh, coincidences, and, and various uh, insights. I I got onto this road that I'm on now, um, and I did, you know, I did a lot of uh, a lot of training and study and coaching and mentoring and counselling and and I just developed this thing that I now call business business and life coaching, um, and like you said, small business mentoring and probably hand holding and um, and you know uh, everything you <laughs> everything else you'd like to you'd like or, or other labels you'd like to use um to support small business owners um to help small business owners who are overwhelmed who find themselves in a state of overwhelm and who find themselves stuck and frustrated to to get unstuck um to build the businesses and lives that um they set out to build when they started their business but found they got stuck in. Yeah, I, I think that's the biggest challenge for a lot of business owners, right? They have this big dream. They want to mm. be their own boss. They want to work less. Like this is all the perceptions that business owners have when they first start. And the reality <laughs> is they're the ones that are working 14, 16 hour days. They're the yep. ones that are cleaning up the mess. They're the ones yep. that grind it out, dealing with the customers, do the job that they hate doing. Um, but I mean, <clears throat> the learning lesson, right? A lot of people go in for all the wrong reasons and they don't have the proper structure or education on this front, right? This is a new journey yeah. for a lot of people. Yeah, it is. I mean, uh, people, I mean, I, I generally work with people who, um, who've started their business on the back of a profession or a trade, something they're good at. Um, and they think to themselves, well, I ought to be doing this for myself rather than for a boss by now, because I'm too good to be doing this for myself, uh, for a boss for uh, any longer. So they they go out and start this thing, whether it's a plumbing business or an architectural business or, uh, or um, you know, a catering business or a web development business or, um, you know, you name it, whatever it is. But it's something that's based on the, on the skill, the profession that they have. Um, and then after a while, they come to the conclusion that they find this conclusion, you know, they get confronted with the fact that it takes a lot more than being a good plumber to build a good plumbing business. As a matter of fact, you don't even need to be a particularly good plumber to build a, build a good plumbing business. I mean, that can help, but it could also hinder. No, I, to I totally agree. Um, and, you know, a lot of these experts are not <clears throat> meant to or they shouldn't even start a business if they're not ready to, um, you know, look outside of 
you know, from an outside point of view, right? Not doing the trade itself. Mm -hmm. like, there's so mm -hmm. much more operations, human resource, customer service, sales, <laughs> finances, you know, accounting, etc. So a lot of these people might not even even be aware of what it takes to be a business owner and they just get in thinking I'm an expert. I can make more margin than my owner is and yeah. let's try to do it myself and get my own clients and everything else. But they yeah. don't really think about what really has to happen. No, but it's, you know, actually I just thought it's actually very similar to becoming a parent. Um, I don't know. You, I guess you said you were going to pick up your son um, at um, uh, in, in in half an hour or whatever. And so um, we become parents, and no one can really tell us what it's like until we are parents. You know, you get, it's <clears throat> you become a parent. You get a child, two children, whatever, and um, and you start you start to see your life changing in unbelievable ways and you go why didn't ever anybody ever tell me well they probably did but you just didn't really hear or didn't understand and 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 you know i take a i take a little bit of issue with what you say but people shouldn't have become business owners because then i i kind of don't agree with that because i i think people well i think everybody should become a business owner but that's maybe um maybe i've got a twisted perspective a big it's just it's just it's always completely different than you expect it's always um it's always an adventure and a challenge and some people make it some people don't well that doesn't mean that that's wrong it just means that you've had you get life experiences that uh, that add up to something else and then maybe you do something else again after it at least you get it out of your system but uh, the, the whole experience of being a business owner is just completely unlike what most people expect. I mean, I, I've often worked with people that have come out of the corporate world, have, um, they've had a job working in offices or whatever, and they go, well, I'm, I'm going to do this thing myself. And then, you know, I speak to them, uh, you know, a year or two or three or five years later, and they say, I just still can't believe, and I find it so hard to get used to, that if something needs to happen in the business, there is only one person who has to do it. If the toilet paper runs out in the office, I have to go and get the toilet paper. Uh, I have to make sure that it happens. It's just, it, it, they're not, it, it, it never even occurred to them that when they're working in this office, when there's something goes wrong with the computer, they ring the, the IT department, the IT come, the department comes and fix it. But when up, goes up, something goes wrong with, with your computer or with my computer, there is no IT department and you need to somehow become an expert at fixing the computer. I mean, you know, where did that come from? I was, <laughs> you know, I was a, I'm an experienced recruiter or a HR manager, a marketing director. I don't know anything from computers. They're just meant to work. And if it doesn't work, then we call someone, they fix it. Or, yeah. And so it's just all this kind of, so it, anyway, it's this, um, um, yeah, it's all these unexpected, unexpected stuff, and it's just, it's just, a, it's just a major, a big adventure. It's just, yeah, an enormous journey that um, is sometimes really frustrating and and sometimes a lot of fun. Um, but I suppose that's life. I suppose. Yeah, I, I think uh, embrace the journey, right? Because there's yeah. going to be a lot of challenges. There's going to be ups and downs. And there's yeah. going to be pain points, right? It's how you yeah. overcome them. There's going to be a lot yeah. more failure than successes. And you have to put a hat on for every single role based mm. on what is required, especially at the beginning, early years, right? Mm. You actually understand what it takes to become a business owner. Unless you're mm. well-funded, you're, you're a startup and you're a tech company, et cetera. But uh, most yeah, people... Yeah, it's a different kind starting, of... Yeah, yeah. Most business owners who are starting their own venture... Um, you know, yes, they have a trade or they they have this dream or idea, right? Um, mm -hmm. and hopefully it works out, but if it doesn't, it's a learning curve, right? And make yeah. sure that it doesn't affect or impact your real desires and dreams and make sure you're in it for the right reasons as well, right? Because if you're not, then it's really going to harm you, yeah. right? Yeah. No, and uh, well, and it's this thing about being in it for the right reasons is uh, that's really that's my mantra um that, that the thing I, I, I keep coming back my soapbox if you will the thing i keep coming back on um if you 
if you start, if you're not clear what this business is about, I, I call it, I refer to it um, as, you know, the, the big question of small business. The question is, what is your business on this earth for? What is it, what, what is it here to do and why would anybody care? And if you can only answer that question by, I'm here to make money, um, you're going to have a really tough time all the way down the track because customers have never bought anything from anyone because that person needed to make money, right? I mean, uh, no customers buy um, uh, SEO optimization from, from you because you need to make money. They, people, people only buy from you because they believe you have something really valuable to offer to them and to the world for that matter. And so you've got to, you've got to start with being able to answer that question. What am I on this earth for? Or what's this business on this earth for? And why would anybody care? And that, and, and if you do that really well, um, uh, then you'll end up making a lot of money as well. But it's, but you focus on the money and you completely put in the horse behind the car. No, these are a really good point. So I wanted to ask you, let's take a step back and say, um, you know, you, you basically sold your construction business and you started this journey on being a coach, mentor, uh, consultant. Um, what kind of change, like what was that shift? Why did you do it first off? And what really motivated you to do what you're doing? Was there people that kind of pushed you to this or no, no, no. like, yeah, what, no, what it's, it's what's well, kind of accidental. I mean, um, I came across the concept of coaching in 2003 when, um, or four, when I was sitting in, in a restaurant in Italy talking to someone who, who was telling me about their coach in Denmark, their life coach in Denmark, and I'd never heard of the concept of coaching, before, life coaching at all before. And I thought, wow, that's interesting. And so I went, went and found out about that and enrolled in my first course be, because uh, I just thought it was interesting and, I've, and I, I loved it and then did all the courses that that company offered and then went to another company and did all their courses and trainings and studies and et cetera, et cetera. And then I just kind of developed, I started playing with it and, um, and found that I'm good at it, uh, good at what I do, which is not pure coaching at all. Actually, it's just all over the, it's, you know, it's all over the shop, but, um, and it kind of developed, and 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 it, 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 analogous to what I said before, the, I wasn't sure, you know, in the early days, if you'd asked me, "What are you on this earth for, and why why would anybody care?" I wouldn't have been able to answer the question. And so I spent a lot of time thinking about that question for myself. And so um, at some point, I, I gained clarity over that, and then I defined it in a statement, you know, that I I aim to um, I'm here to help small business owners feel great about themselves and about their business by making business fun. And, um, and when I got that, that clarity, I'm here to help business owners feel great about themselves and about, about their business by making business fun. It suddenly became clear what it was, what, what I was meant to do, where, who, who I was supposed to talk to and, and, and how I was supposed to talk to them and how I was supposed to deliver, develop my marketing and my SEO and, um, and, and all of that, but uh, not until I gained that clarity, did it, did, it, did I, did I end up starting to build the proper kind of practice that I have now? Yeah, yeah no, that totally makes sense. Like you, we always talk about like, what's your, why, what, what yeah, is yeah, the yeah, reason, yeah. what's your purpose, right? And you should yeah. be living your passion anyways, right? And do something by giving more than trying to get right. So all yeah. these makes total sense. Um, I was going to ask you, so like, I know you sold your business. Um, mm -hmm. Was there any pivots at that time where, um, you know, you, you cashed out or whatever, you sold it to a partner, um, mm -hmm. but this allowed you to think like, why didn't you go back into construction? Right? Like what, what I'm trying to figure out is you were doing it for X amount of years before. You were an expert in that trade and industry and people knew, knew you for that. What changed? Like, you know, I, I know you met, you went on a trip and you talked about that yeah, life yeah. coach, yeah. but was there a, any doubt that you didn't want to go back into the construction industry? Like, 
Um, yeah. Did you no, ever well. think about that? Uh, yeah, no, no. Look, I, I mean, I suppose I've, cha- I've changed careers in my life a few times, but um, I used to, I, originally I used to be a journalist be in, uh, before I came to Australia, actually, but and there's a few other things I've done, but uh, to me, <clears throat> and I suppose this is why I, I don't refer to myself as just a, being a business coach, but I call myself a business and life coach because I believe firmly, and I have ex- certainly experienced that in my own life, that business and life are not, you can't separate them. You can't, I can't separate my business from my life, from who I am, right? And in my early 40s, um, a lot of changes happened to me personally um, in my being uh, that meant that being a cons- you know being in construction just I was just over it I just had enough I just didn't want that to okay. be <laughs> what the rest of my life is going to be like anymore and I was searching for for what was going to fit um, okay. for the next stage in my life and so so it's just stages in life I suppose I mean I, I um, yeah yeah I, I'm I very totally pr- get it yeah I mm. totally get it because timing right and it's where mm. you're at in terms of where you're living at that time oh yeah yeah i mean it's and it's all the stuff around the other stuff around that has an impact on you i mean i, I had three kids so i still got three kids but um <clears throat> when i sold the building business the kids kind of got to um, a level of adulthood that meant that i didn't have that sort of draining responsibility of being a full-time kind of father anymore okay. and and um so there was a sort of a freedom from that back, beckoning, which meant that I didn't have to have that same you know level of responsibility um, on a day to day basis. I could be, yeah, I could take a take take more risks. Where you know when I was in my thirties, uh, you know, young kids, and you know there, there was there was no option. There was no no option to say, okay, well, I'm just going to throw everything away and go and sit in Italy for a few months and wonder what to do with the rest of my life because. You just got to, you know, you have the responsibilities of a parent and a family and uh, paying more mortgages and all that kind of stuff. But when that, you know, in my mid forties, that the kids were grow, were kind of grown up and I didn't have to look after them for on a day to day basis and financially anymore. Suddenly things were possible to go and explore. And that's, and that's that, that kind of expl- ex- is exactly the reason that I don't, that everything I do when I work with people, is about their whole of life you know when the, the goals we set the the things the things we try and achieve the create the, the dream we create to try to create is is about their whole of life not just this thing called the business which is just a slice out of their life it's the whole the, the whole picture of what's going on for you today and and because there's no point trying to build a great business if at the same time you're destroying your family or your relationships or your health or, you know, all that sort of stuff, because then, you know, that's, yeah. No, it's a great uh, analogy because that's actually one of my questions later about like the pillars in life, right? Because if you're, you're in alignment with yourself and you're living Mm. a very fulfilled, happy life, there's Mm. a lot of things outside of business right yeah. or work yeah. right like your family your community relationships um hmm. you know health um you know just all that is so important right and you, you can't keep the big picture out of what you're after right because ultimately no. why are you doing what you're doing right yeah no that's right yeah so yeah. these are you know you you nailed it so i, I was gonna get back to like the some of the challenges that you faced early on in your career, um, even starting the construction business to even starting your coaching business, um, what challenges did you face um, and what kind of, how did you overcome them and what mistakes were there? Uh, I've made so many mistakes. I can't, you can't believe how many mistakes I made. And I'm, I'm sure I'll make many more mistakes, but um, and I, I'm, I'm one of those kind of people that um, 
tends to want to reinvent the wheel. Um, I, 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 I kind of tend to feel the need to create things myself rather than borrow from other people. Well, I mean, I always borrow from other people, but I mean, I, if I don't, if I want to create something, I tend to feel the need to start from scratch and really work out what this, what this, what this is. So, you know, just, um, you would probably hate me for saying so, but the SEO that, uh, that I've done on my, on my website, um, is all, is, is, it's all SEO that I've done myself and it's worked because otherwise you wouldn't have found me, but um, um, it's not perfect far from it, obviously, but, um, but I've always felt the need to, so I've, I've done a lot of reading and thinking about, you know, just to use that example um, uh, and, and experimenting and playing around with, uh, with SEO over the years um, and I could have just engaged someone else, but someone to do it for me. Um, but I, <clears throat> and that would have probably, and that certainly would have been quicker. It would certainly would have been more efficient. Um, but I, yeah, I don't know for better or for worse. I always ended up, you know, and, and that's just one example. Um, I've tended to want to, uh, to, to invent things myself. That's not always efficient. Um, uh, but it's cheap, right? <laughs> yeah, and I, I think it all depends on where you're at in your business as well. Oh, right? no, completely. And, and you, you Usually when people that. are bootstrapping and starting off, you don't have yeah. funds, but you have tons of time, right? So oh, that's right. with that's that right. time, you can easily try to do it yourself. And when it gets yeah. too yeah. consuming and you get, kind of give up, then you kind of look for someone that can help. No, you. no, totally. And I, and, and I often, um, oh, well, I mean, nearly always end up advising my clients to go and, um, find a good SEO uh, partner and, and uh, agency to work with. Um, but, you know, you've got to understand that the business that I, I'm in at the moment is a business of one person. I am me and me, myself and I, and there's no one else. And I don't want there to be anybody else. I've just, after I sold my building business, I decided that I don't want to create a big business with overheads and stuff and, 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 and all that kind of stuff in the, in, in the building days, I had people walking around all over the place, and and, um, and I had partners, and I had uh, and I had contractors and subcontractors, and you name it. Um, uh, but I decided that this stage of my life, I just wanted to be me and me and me and myself with a phone number and an email address and nothing else. Yeah. And um, uh, and that's a that's a choice I made, and 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 because of that choice, I you know I I limit the involvement of other people. Um, but That's I was just using it as an example of how you've got to learn things and, you, and, and, the, and the, the things you've got to, you do, this, the decisions you make and the mistakes you make are all consequences of the, the questions you ask yourself. And it, and it starts with that, how do I make, you know, it, it, it keeps coming back to that purpose question. What, what am I here for? What's, what's this business on this earth for and why does anybody care? I'm here to help small business owners feel great about themselves and about their business by making business fun. And, and I keep asking myself, how can I best do that? And it turns out that for me, the best way to do that is to stay small. Yeah. If I did, if I went and created a bigger business with lots of coaches and lots of mentors and, and offsiders and programs and webinars and seminars and, you know, you name it, um, I couldn't achieve what I do um, it's not to say that other people can't, but I can't. And so I, if I'm true to my purpose to help small business owners feel great, uh, I can really only do that on my own. And so therefore it's a, it's a very, it's a very small niche business. I only work with a few clients a year and, and all, and, and all that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, like I, these points are great because if you think about it, people who define success, Mm. It, it, it could be just running your own business, not growing it to have 10 employees. No, it doesn't have it, to be, no. And, and maybe it means you want a personalized client relationship, right? And you want to yeah. do everything yourself. So that means more control and you're not giving up ownership when you have partners. And when you have employees, yeah. you got more headaches because you got to manage. If you're not right. strong in management, then, you know, that's not something you no, want to do right. in the first yeah. place. So, and then oh, you it's not even when you're not strong in 
it's not even whether you're not strong at it. It's it's it, it's about. I, I I often say to business to my clients and people generally, the most important skill you can learn as a business owner is learning how to say no. Yep. You and if you don't know how to say no, and when to say no, um, you're always going to be overwhelmed. You're always going to be doing stuff you're not you don't you don't really want to do and you're not going to make money. Um, you've got to be able to pick and choose. And you've got to say, this is right for me and this is not yep. right for me. And this is where I should focus and this is where I should not focus. And, <clears throat> um, uh, and, and so I've got absolute clarity about that um, and because it fits in what I want to do. But there is no... But I, I know business coaches here in um, in, in Australia and, and elsewhere, who for who just when they ask themselves those questions, the answers are very different, and they want to they they feel the need to grow their business and have ten people working for them delivering their programs and 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 buy stuff online and all that kind of stuff, and that's that's great. It's just not for me, and um, and it doesn't have to be. And I think that's one of the big things that people need to. Well, it's it's a funny thing that I, I'm the last you know you mentioned my books. The last chapter in my in my third book talks about the growth myth. Um, there is no absolute God given rule that a business must grow. A business doesn't have to grow. Business can be exactly what it is for me, which is one person, and it'll ten years from now it'll probably still be what just one person, me, and that is. People say, well, you know, but is, are you successful? I said, certainly, because it's my choice to be where I want to be. And, 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 <clears throat> and so if I was saying yes to things that I shouldn't be doing within this context, uh, then I might be growing, but I wouldn't be successful because I'm, I'm ch chasing the wrong things. You, we don't have to grow. What we have to do is be sustainable. Yep. Um, we, uh, we, we, we have to meet our needs and we have to do good work, but we don't have to grow. There's no absolute imperative on that. Um, uh, yeah. yeah. Nothing wrong with it, but you know. Yeah. Ultimately, <coughs> un uncovering why you're doing it and what, what does a real happiness really mean to you and what does success really mean? If it means yeah. maybe even community contributing, um, providing a service and giving back, right? Volunteer. Um, mm -hmm. That might be great, if, especially if you're able to. Right. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Um, doing mentoring and all that stuff. Right. Like, so mm. the purpose in people's lives and y you might not be, you know, maybe being a business owner is not meant for you. Right. Like, no, absolutely. You just be yeah. a worker and you'd be super content and happy because you don't want the extra uh, responsibilities and you need those no. type of people. Right. But yeah, yeah. We, we, we can't we can't all be um, uh, business owners. It's impossible. It just doesn't work. And it's right for some people at some point, some time, and not for and and not at other times, right? It's 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 perfectly okay. Yeah. yeah so <clears throat> what kind of advice would you give? Maybe a couple <clears throat> advice or tips that you can give to people that are just thinking of starting off, um, either just starting to be an entrepreneur or business owner, or been doing it for many years but mm -hmm. just no clarity, right? <clears throat> yeah. Uh, well, I suppose the first thing I always um, would say to people is slow down. Um, we don't, you don't have to rush. You don't have to rush. You can you can take all the time you want. Uh, there's it, it, there's no um, there, there's no deadlines by which you must. So slow down. Small steps. We we you know small 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 steps consistently taken. Um, are the most effective way forward. You know, you've, uh, uh, the big changes that we all want to make, the big incremental, the big um, change programs, they're, all, they're, they're nearly always end up stranding and getting frustrating. But small steps, what's the smallest? I mean, one of my key, key um, principles that I work with with my clients is um, find, find the smallest difference that makes a difference. What is the smallest difference that we can that we can that we can make that will make a difference? What's the tiniest little step you can take tomorrow 
um, that will get you one step little one little step closer and then what's the tiniest little step the day after and the day after and day after you know that old um, that old uh, Chinese I believe saying or it's meant to be it's supposed to be a Chinese saying but it could be anything um, you know a journey of a thousand miles starts with the first step well that's true journey of a thousand miles starts with the first step but you've also got to take the second and the third and the fourth and the fifth step. If you don't take, you know, it's all very well to get on the journey, but you've got to keep taking the steps, right? And it's a thousand steps. So it means you've got to take one every day. Um, so slow down and take small steps. Just worry about the small step. What's the next small step? And then what's the next one? And what's the next one? But just worry about the small step in front of you rather than all the thousand steps that are still to come. Um, and um so that's that's one that's one key principle i believe that helps people out of over out of overwhelm most small business owners are at some point or other in overwhelm i was i have been absolutely you've probably been in overwhelm at different times um unless you're very lucky and um uh, so yeah and, and but the only way out of that is to small steps the second the second thing I always ask people to think about is um, that just because you decided, you think today that reaching a goal, a particular goal is important to reach by a certain time, doesn't mean that tomorrow you still have the same opinion. You know, the, the, the goals need to, must change all the time because a goal a goal at best is only ever guessing. You can't ever do more than guess about what a goal or a plan is going to look like, right? I mean, there's an old um, um, general, I think, you know, from this 18th century or something who, who, who's famous for saying, um, uh, no battle plan ever survives the first contact with the enemy. Um, you know, no matter what plan you make, no matter what goals you set, tomorrow is a different day and the world changes. And if the world changes, your plans and your goals might have to change. So by all means, set goals. I mean, I work with goals all the time with people, but be prepared to change them and be happy to change them. It's, there's, nothing, there's, there's nothing sillier than pushing a goal that isn't relevant anymore just because you've set the goal. I've set this goal, so I've got to keep forcing myself that way yeah. well no if turns out that that's not relevant if you actually don't want to go there anymore well, go go somewhere else at, 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 that's not aimlessness that means that you're being realistic so um goals that we set today um are potentially not relevant or they might turn out to be too hard or too easy um so change them um yeah so um and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Um, and um, yeah, you you bring up some really good points because if you think about um, how how a lot of business owners are so caught up with trying to chase dreams and prove mm. to people or prove to themselves, um, mm. you know, this is what social media has actually um, got people to constantly check their tech your yeah, 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 yeah. to yeah. always see what other people are doing right oh no it's terrible and, yeah. and this is the the problem i actually personally don't go on social media myself i oh, i yeah. am very present when i'm present with people and with my son or family and mm -hmm. i actually feel like it's helped me reflect right and really appreciate and have way more gratitude in terms mm. of life right and i'm much happier that way before mm. i was always checking i was stressing i wasn't able to sleep and all this in your mind and it's really self-inflicted right and oh, absolutely it's yeah. really just you thinking you need to hit this goal you thinking that you need to you know be there and constantly check things when you get away with, you remove all the things that are not important in your life, focus on what is important and be present for them, you're yeah. so much more happy. You're way more clear in terms of perspective in life, in business, in whatever your focus and dreams are. And really, that's where you're at a really good point in your life. Like, you're just happy, right? Yeah, yeah.
Yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. And, um, and, and, and yeah, totally, totally. And, um, and, and, and part of that is also, and it's back to that the big question of small business that I refer to, you know, why are you here for? Why would anybody care? Um, the, I suppose the last tip I'd, or tip or, you know, something I'd give is that the, um, to do well in to do well in business, you need to be differentiated. Now, that's not the first time that anybody's ever said that. Far from it. Everybody always says you need to have a unique value proposition or whatever it is, a new selling proposition, and that's true. But the problem is that people don't really understand what that means most of the time. And because so, if <clears throat> if I go and ask uh, a random business owner, so what are you special at? What do you what what what? Why should I do business with you? Most people will give me a combination of the following three answers. They say I I I I do great work for a great price with great customer service, and most people will will say something along those along those lines well what's special about you why why are you so good well because we give we do great work for a great price with great customer service and and undoubtedly that's true but so does everybody else because i have never yet asked a business owner that question they said well we do average work for an average price with average customer service. No one ever, ever, no one's ever said that. No one ever believes that, right? And if you're competing with business owners for a particular work, for a particular contract or a particular job or a product, supply of a product, you can be absolutely sure that the client is, own, is assuming that all the people that they're asking for a proposal or a quote from or a tender from will all give, do great work for a great price with great customer service. Otherwise, they wouldn't be asking asking for a tender or, for, or a proposal. Nobody, no customer has ever gone out to look for someone who does average work for an average price with average customer service. Everybody, they, they <coughs> the, the three, five or 10 suppliers that they ask for a quote or a tender from, they, uh, from their perspective, will all be in the same in the same in the same range. Otherwise, they would. So you've got to find something else. You've got to find another way to differentiate yourself, and and um, because otherwise you just you end up the only thing that the customer can check is the price. If the, if you're all doing great work at, with great customer service, then the only thing that's left for the customer to check is the price and and. Competing on price is just a dog's game. We all know that we want to avoid it at, 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 you know, at, any, at any cost. So what is the other thing? What is the, what is the thing that sets you apart? And, and, and that's got to be about what you, what you get out of bed for in the morning. What, what is it that you are absolutely passionate about? What makes you, what makes you go, yeah, what, what do you get excited about? What, um, what do you believe in at a, at a core, at a core, you know, core belief? If you, if you don't spend time to really get clear about that, um, what that difference is, what it is, um, you're always going to end up being at risk of, of, um, of, uh, of having to compete on price. And it's just, just, it's just, it's just a dog's game. Yeah. And I, I will also add, like, if you're a product based company, right. Um, yeah. In terms of online digital, you're mainly competing with price, but there's other factors like shipping or delivery time or add-ons like customer service. Yeah, there might be better exchange policy or whatever it may be. Sure. But if you're a service-based type of company, then yeah. there's a lot of other things that you can do or say to win that over, right? You need to know what your competitive is doing and offering at that price, but never compete on price, right? What is your key USP or, you know, competitive edge, right? And that yeah. could be like, you have way more experience someone, it is a family run business, you're open extra hours, um, you offer, you know, pickup delivery, I, I don't know, right? It could be anything. Yeah, no, I think it, but I think it goes, I think it needs to go beyond that, right? And see, I think, well, I think we all know that people, buy emotionally and 
we'll leave the product business aside for a moment because that's not really where my expertise is, right? I don't, I, I don't have a lot of experience with uh, businesses that make widgets or products like that. I, um, <clears throat> and sell them. Um, 99% of my experience in business and life has been with people who sell services or sell themselves in some way, right? Services or trades or um, even retail, which is still a service, right? So um, uh, it's got to go. It's got to go beyond opening extra hours and convenience and all that kind of stuff. I believe, um, you know, quite a way beyond that. And uh, it's about engaging, engaging the customer at their emotional level. That and and, and that can only come from your beliefs. So, um, you know, a great example is an electrician that I worked with for years who um, and is also a good friend of mine now, but um, his whole, you know, electrical contractor, I think that's what you say in, uh, in, uh, in Canada, um, he, his business, and it's quite a big business now, is completely focused on one thing, safety. It's because that's what keeps him, him awake at night. He... He, if he doesn't feel 100% comfortable that all the, all the work that he and his company do is absolutely about safety, about making customers safe and um, um, in their home and in their environment, he will wake up in a cold sweat in the middle of the night. He can't stand the thought of it. So his whole company is about safety. I mean, his purpose statement is, is um, um, you're in safe hands. That's what it's, it's about safety. And so, that communicates itself through everything he and the company does. And that, and that's what allows him to be more expensive than others because people go, well, sure, I can get a cheap electrician or I can get someone who is totally thinks about safety, my, my safety all the way through from beginning to end. So I can feel confident that everything that they do is first and foremost about the safety of me and my, my kids and my whatever, my pets and whatever. So, um, and I can give you thousands of examples like that. It's, it's about that emotional, emotional difference and how you connect with customers. So for me, it's I help small business owners feel great about themselves and about their business. Um, sure, if you want to make bazillion dollars, there's other, other people that, that, that focus on that, that's great. But if you want to feel great, then I'm the person to yeah. talk to. I, I guess the big thing is connect them on a personal level and yeah. figure out who that tribe is, your ideal customer, and really yeah. narrow down on putting that message out there and trying to mm -hmm. get that message across to, you know, let, let everyone know what you're all about, right? Like, yeah. Keep it consistent. Keep that message out there, and it's like a brand statement, right? Like um, you're you're not just mission, but your real real calling, right? Um, yeah, yeah, so yeah. It's that, I mean, we've talked about it before. That why thing. I mean, you know, there's um. I'm sure you've come across, and your listeners might will have come across at different times. Um, this guy called Simon uh, Sinek. What well, Simon Sinek? Sinek. S I N E K. He um. There's a famous TED talk of his um, of some years ago now, and the refrain that he talks about in and then he's written a book about he's written a book called it. It all starts with why. Um, I think the TED talk's actually better than the book, but um, the, uh, in within the TED talk, his refrain is: people don't buy what you do; they buy why you do it. People don't buy what you do; they buy why you do it. Uh, and he uses lots of examples to illustrate that. And I, I believe that to be really true. Now, maybe I don't even think it's different at the level of products. I mean, that's okay. And, and, and Simon Sinek in his talk talks about Apple. I mean, Apple, that's all about products. Um, but Apple is, can charge more than anybody else because of this whole set of emotional connections that it's created with people. But in the, you know, people, yeah, you know, anyway. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, Simon Sinek is great. I actually watched him uh, do a speaking engagement two years ago. So oh, yeah. um, I, like the big thing is stay educated as well. Let's figure out like as a business owner, stop, don't ever stop learning as well. There's so much more oh, yeah. information. Yeah, out yeah. There. Yeah. Um, and if you're curious, 
stay curious, keep making mistakes, but never give up, right? Um, a couple of things I wanted to uh, kind of end off and ask you. Mm -hmm. um, so what drives you today? What, what's the key motivator? Because you've been doing this um, coaching business for so many years. What keeps you going now? What is, has it pivoted? Have, have you changed your um, passion well, I'm on, mission, I'm... Uh, the, since you started? Um, um, well, yeah, but it's about that. It's about that. I mean, I, I take people on journeys or I go on journeys with people. Um, every time I engage, I engage with people for maybe up to a year. Um, rarely less than six months, but it's usually between six months and a year. And it, um, and it's about going on a journey. We, um, it's like we get on a boat together and we push off from the shore and we start rowing and we get to the middle of the ocean and we have to deal with the sharks and the reefs and the winds and the storms and the, and, and we get to the end of the journey and it's just, it's always been an amazing adventure. And it's that experience every time again with the clients that I work with being part of that journey with them and seeing them grow and develop and being part of that is just, there's nothing like it nothing else like it for me it's just the most wonderful experience i i oh, that's amazing. It makes it makes it makes my heart sing yeah. literally it's, it's good it's good for my soul so um you know you ask what drives you in that's it i i want those experiences experiences constantly i just love being part of part of those journeys with people and because every journey is completely different and we never know where it's going to end up and it's always amazing and exciting and and and, and wonderful and i and I, well, yeah, I, it's, it's truly like that. I, um, I just, I just love it. We always go and celebrate at the end of our journeys, and we go and have, um, have a, a lovely lunch somewhere, um, and get drunk and and celebrate and and, <laughs> uh, and and have a wonderful time. And so, um, that's what drives me. That experience of being on those adventures and those journeys with people, and, and they're not, they're often not easy. They're often really hard at different times, right? But that's the journey. Um, and has that changed? What well, it's just, I. It's it's really that experience. Um, I, I seek that experience more and more, and and less and less of any other distractions because it's that's just it's just a gorgeous place to be, seeing people grow and develop and become enjoy the, their corner of the world more and themselves more and feel and feel great about themselves. I mean, what else would you want in life to help have people, you know, who are overwhelmed? um when they come in when they meet you um after some time um start to feel really great about themselves and blossom it's just it's just lovely <laughs> that's amazing i mean that's your calling right it seems like yeah, yeah, you're, yeah. you're you're definitely impacting the world you're helping others achieve whatever their goals and dreams and aspirations are and it seems yeah. like you're having fun and ultimately that's what life is about right absolutely um, continue mm -hmm. doing that so how how can some of our listeners get a hold of your business get a hold of you directly and maybe some of your social media handles yeah look um look the easiest way is just to go to my website um at ww uh, Actually, it'll, there'll probably be a link here somewhere, won't there? On the, yes. But yeah, newperspectives.com.au. Um, I work with people all around the world, actually, um, because I do all my work via Skype these days or Zoom or one of those kind of things. So, um, yeah, it's, it's easy to find me via, via newperspectives.com.au. I, I, I'm also on Facebook and LinkedIn, but uh, the easiest way to interact with me is via my website. And uh, I've got, you mentioned my books before, they're, uh, they're all available for free um, in a, as, download, as e book downloads or audio books. And I've got lots of, lots and lots and lots of other resources on my website. I've got way too many resources. It's nearly. <laughs> it's well, and that's it, it sounds like you're giving constantly giving and that's the best part of it like mm -hmm. and it's up to the people to take action right and the ones that actually yeah. want to do something with it they'll do it the ones yeah. that will not then you know best of luck right but yeah, no, I'm glad right. at least you're you're connecting and trying to do good um so i really want to thank you for being on our show today roland um Pleasure. i know you're in Aust australia and the time difference is uh, a little bit you know, on the other end, I think you're ahead of us like 18 hours or something. 
Um, 18. My God, that's a long, isn't it? Yeah, anyway. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> I do a, really appreciate uh, you being on our show. And thanks a pleasure. lot for all the input that you've provided. My pleasure. I enjoyed it. Nice to meet you.